country. We have no idea what we're doing. It's fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. We're fine. It's fine. Let me tell you a little story about a family of four. Mom's moving too. She's moving in next door. We're going to the country to enjoy the view. The only problem is, you know, they haven't got a clue. So they're calling on the dad to build the home. Trust me when I say they can't do this alone. She's a little fancy and he's afraid of snakes. Find out if they have what it takes. Yeah. I'm Leah, a boy mom and an interior stylist with an emphasis in vintage decor. Basically, my whole life is one big giant treasure hunt. <laughs> it's true. Yes, it is. I'm Michael, or Finn as all my friends call me, or my wife calls me Finstagram. Uh, I run a family business that deals in farmland. I'm writing a children's book, and I like to rock out dad style. Yeah, the rocking out dad style is why we're building a house. Everybody needs their own space. The guitars need a home, man. We moved back to Texas about four years ago. We were living in Los Angeles. We were both in the entertainment business. Um, we had just had our first son, Ford, and um, I was on a TV show and we didn't get renewed for a second season. So I just looked at him and I was like, we gotta go home. I was an actor, but turns out I wasn't gonna be the next Brad Pitt and uh, just seemed like a good fit. Get out of LA, get back to my roots. I'm from Central Texas. So is Leah. So much more wide open spaces for the kids to roam. It seemed like a great fit and it really was. You're way cuter than Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> Five, six years ago, you couldn't have paid me. And there's no way I would have thought we'd be living in small town central Texas, but <laughs> here we are. We love it. So we love this little town so much that we decided to buy this piece of property when it came up for sale just as an investment. It's about seven acres. 6.71. Okay. We started coming out here to the property and really hanging out during quarantine. It was kind of a respite, get the boys out of the house, a little bit more place to roam. Yeah, and one night we came out here tailgating with a glass of wine and the sun was setting and Leah just looked out there and she got tears in her eyes. I was like, man, this is so beautiful. I blame the wine. You ready to do this? Yeah, signed the contract. And look, come on, and this is God country. It is very, very beautiful. Because of COVID, my mom moved back in with us full time, which has been awesome, but she can't live in our guest bedroom forever. It was my guitar room, but she took that over. Right, back to everybody needing their own space. True. It just felt like the right move and the right time for our family, so. No time like the present. That's right. I mean, I know it doesn't look like much, but there will be a house here someday. This property's got everything you want. It's got flat land to build on. It's got slopes for drainage, which goes on this amazing wet weather creek. And I, get, I just have these visions of the boys fishing there. There's no fish. Skinny dipping with some- There's no water in it actually. I mean, sometimes. I mean, yeah, but there's, it's rare. The kids can come here and go swimming, catch fish or whatever's in Frogs. there. Frogs. And it was just beautiful. And so we're like, when we actually did the- Typhoid. <laughs> Is that a thing? I think it's like a mosquito disease, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, one can dream. Envision like a lot of late nights out here, guitars, fires, campfires, some whiskey with Ford hot chocolate and s'mores. Just, I see a lot of good conversation and a lot of fun out here. It's gonna be great. I love it, babe. Yeah. This will be fun. The boys are really gonna love growing up here. Yeah, as long as they don't get bit by snakes. Oh my God, there's snakes out here. Our neighbor told me he found a den at 35. Um, I haven't been sleeping well since. It's gonna be fine. But there are snakes. It's fine. So one of the things we're really looking forward to about this property and building here is that we can kind of go off the grid a little bit. I don't know, with everything that's been going on in the world, it feels like we should start thinking about how to be more self-sufficient. We're gonna have wells. That's something we gotta learn for the water. I think it's just one well. Oh yeah, that's right. I'd love to have some chickens. We're gonna have goats, make goat cheese. He's, we're not, you keep bringing up this thing about goat cheese, but like. It'd be nice if I'm someone not, came over and offered him a glass of wine, or here, have some of my goat cheese. Do you know how to make goat cracker. cheese? No, Are you gonna nipple the goats? YouTube, I'm sure there's YouTube videos. The thing that you should know about us is that we are completely unprepared for this off the grid living. I mean, I would not consider us outdoorsy people. You've never even caught a fish. Why you gotta put me on blast like that? Well, it's, it's kind of important. I mean, there's no fish in our creek, but if there were fish... I would still want to catch <laughs> You've never been camping. Does glamping count? No, not when you got electricity in your cabin. There was housekeeping too. 
the truth of it is, we have no idea what we're doing, but thankfully, we have help. My dad. Ah, uh, Builder Gary. He's building us this house. My dad's been in the home building business for like 40 something years. I've been in the home building business since the early 70s, working for local home builders and moved my way up into publicly traded companies. How would you describe my dad? <laughs> dry, very dry. The driest of all the martinis. He's very serious, to the point, very thorough, maybe a little bit grumpy. He just wants to get the job done. Glass wall. Oh my God, this Michael, is, I've got to talk to my husband. By wall. the way, I want you to know that all I'm of this, get this okay, over the oh God, I'm I need it. Okay, you're right, no, you're right. That's Michael's fault. And you know it's what? It's not a fault. It's no, just, it I'm is a fault. I'm going to tell you. Custom, I get custom. it. I get it. But my husband, that's his fault. Don't record that. Why? What I just said. It's true. Take it off. I'm really excited because I think he's really excited. Is he though? How excited are you about this process? I'm thrilled. Yeah, he's really? excited. Hmm. He's excited. <laughs> I don't know if I'd use that word. My dad is a senior project manager for an awesome builder here in Central Texas called River Hills Homes. And we are so excited to be working with them because, I mean, they're just so knowledgeable. The company I work for now is a River Hills Home and it's based in New Brunswick. And it's owned by a young man. He's in his late, late 30s. And he is just an exceptional human being. We could not do this without my dad. I mean, wouldn't you agree? Definitely not. Builder Gary, Google Gary, if you've got a question, that man has an answer. What do I need to think about when figuring out where to place this house? The flatter, the better. The taller the slab, the more cost in concrete, steel, beams, labor. So the best place to place this is where you have the most level surface. I would say that he really likes to explain things like in depth, in depth, like way in depth, like way deeper than you ever needed to ever know. Ta-da! So far we've got the well drilled and that's pretty cool. We've got water out here now. Okay, we're at the property today and we're drilling our well. We're digging holes. We're digging holes. It was awesome to watch that big rig come and drill and like Ford was so excited. We poured the foundation. And that was really the first time that you could see the rooms like taking shape. Like, oh, whoa, like this is gonna be the kitchen and this is, that yeah. was cool. It's really crazy going from having picnics out there on the land to seeing where our future home's gonna be. It's insane. We um, got to do a slab picnic, which I didn't know was a thing, but everyone was like, yeah, you have to go like break a bottle of champagne or something. And, uh, we didn't do that. I very but... poorly scribbled our name with the concrete. <laughs> you actually didn't scribble our name. You scribbled the date and it's, barely legible. Yeah, I should have been a doctor. So working with my dad has been a huge dream of mine. My parents divorced when I was three years old and because of family dynamics and the fact that they didn't get along like at all, um, I really didn't have a chance to really get to know my dad and hang out with him growing up. So being back in Texas, raising my family here with him and doing this huge project together, it's just, it's just awesome. It's a chance to kind of catch up for all that lost time. You're building a relationship from the ground up. Oh, good one. <laughs> it's, been good nice, one. It, it's been nice to watch, actually. When Leah called me to ask me about if they should build a home or not, I was a little bit surprised because they haven't been in their home all of that long. But at the same time, knowing that lumber prices and concrete prices and labor prices are going up, if they're gonna do it, now's the time to do it. It's been a little strange working with my dad because like, I'll be on the phone with you know, con contractors and stuff with him and I'm like, Oh my dad, I mean, Gary. I mean, it's kind of weird, right? I mean, it's, yeah, it's a little weird. <laughs> They're knowledgeable on what they want and that sets them apart from a lot of other people. A lot of other people really don't know what they want. I mean, they say blood's thicker than water, but is it thicker than concrete? We're about to find out. I am not concerned about working with family now. So, uh, how much would it? Michael wants a gym. How much would it cost to put a gym right here? Shut the hell up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, give me a sketch. Okay. Give me a sketch. I got you. All right. How big is 200 square feet? Leah has more access than any of the other clients. So you, what you would say is I'm a VIP client is what you're saying? Yes, that would be VIP. Yes, that would be true. But no, she. most clients don't have this level of of uh, involvement. It sure did I know, I know, I know that it's you. It says your name on the phone. 
trying to get an understanding of what actually needs to show up at the job site at the end of the month. Okay. So what needs to show up at the job site at the end of the month for you, for you to not be mad and everything to move forward? Well, I don't have to be mad. <laughs> I'll answer it this way. No one else will I answer the phone for. Aww. That's true. I, I won't. I, I mean, what, we've been at this a couple weeks. I feel like I've learned so much. How much do you know about putting in a foundation now? I know to call Mike Terry. <laughs> <laughs> Who is Mike Terry, the foundation contractor? That's correct. We want this house to look like it's been it for about 100 years, you know, worn in part of the earth, a nice patina, like in the English countryside, what kind of house has been here forever. Sure, sure, yeah, sure. Right? I just, my whole goal is that when someone drives by, they don't quite know when it was built. Yeah. Yeah. It's timeless. The style of the house is definitely a throwback and sort of a nod to older traditional homes. Um, we've been working with an amazing architect from Baron Custom Designs, Felicia. She's been so great. It took us about three months to design this house. I basically gave her a crummy little drawing on a napkin and she turned it into our dream home. What we've done so far in the building process, some of it's behind the scenes and some of it is on the ground. If you're looking behind the scenes, it's getting plans finalized, it's getting bids in place, it's getting our budget sets, it's uh, getting contractors approved to come out and do the job. All of that is going on in the background while Leah and Michael are doing their decorating. The first day of framing is finally here and while we are so excited, my dad is busy playing with his Christmas present. Oh gosh. I never really know what to get my dad for Christmas. Like. Basically, I just think like, does oh, it- What a five-year-old one? Yeah. Does it explode? Does it go fast? Does it catch fire? <laughs> if any of those things <laughs> mark the box, then generally- He's gonna dig it. He likes it. Or vacuum, or vacuum cleaners. Yeah, cleaners yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, vacuum cleaners too. So while dad has been busy flying his drone and overseeing framing crews, we have been busy designing the inside of the house and the outside of the house. And by we, I mean me. Sorry, babe. I help a little bit. I mean, I know where I'm putting my guitars. Sure. All right, we are on our way to meet with um, the designer for River Hills. Um, she's helping me sort of pull this project together. And it's just really nice to have somebody to like bounce ideas off of. So that's your husband. I was going to say that. You've been fantastic. Yeah. I'm just basically a yes man. You just gave me a, a story about how the house is like a guitar. True. All right, so I love guitars, and I won't nerd out too much, but I love guitars that have nitrous cellulose lacquer. And oh my God! What that, what that means is the paint is not a poly. It's not going to be fixed there and last through nuclear holocaust. I like when I play to get my sweat on it, to have some chips, and just for it to age naturally, aka giving it a nice patina. So what's going to happen over time is when we first build our house, the exterior will probably be a little clean and pristine, and we want a little more vintage patina to it, but you know, those things take time. So I like money too. So there you go. This, this is, is this is why I have a designer that I'm that's helping me with this project. Look, that was amazing. Every decision so far has felt like a big game of whack-a-mole. You have this decision you have to make and then you research it and are thinking about it constantly, not sleeping in my case. Um, and then you whack this decision, you've made up your mind, right? And then like three more decisions pop up. It's a lot, a lot of balls juggling in there for sure. Yeah, but I'm having a blast so far. You're doing a great job. Thank you. What's up, babe? What's going on? I'm working on our plumbing selection. Yeah? It's a job that never ends. We're gonna go poop in the kitchen? What is that? So when we decided to build the house here, we had to make a choice. Do we want to stay in our house while we build or use that money to help fund this process? It seemed like the more prudent choice. And so who would we employ to help sell our house? None other than your mother. Well, we're keeping it all in the family, you know what I mean? Two small children is not ideal, and we're downsizing to a place that doesn't have a yard. But I will say that everyone's been a pretty big champ so far. What makes this move so difficult is that some of the furniture is staying here, some of the furniture is staying with us, and some of the furniture is going to storage. So, five different people, five different people's things, three different locations of where all this stuff needs to go. 
We got how many months ago? A lot. <laughs> Come on, Builder Gary, let's go. I feel like this process is gonna be good for everybody. My dad and mom have not gotten along for so many years that the fact that he's building her a home now, I would say that they've come a long way. Love can build a home. Sure, it's like therapy. <laughs> I want my red lawnmower back though. <laughs> what is your obsession with the red lawnmower? Mom didn't take your red lawnmower. I want my red light riding lawnmower back. Oh, I had saved up all this money for a red riding lawnmower. And soon thereafter, I was happened to see it at somebody else's house that they were using, mm -hmm. that she was dating, and I wanted my red lawnmower back. This is not that kind of reality show. All right, so they're starting framing today. How long is this gonna take? Uh, three weeks to get all the two inch up. We'll do the big house first and then we can see the second. We should be able to move into Cornish and sheet. I don't know what that means, but we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Let me tell you a little story about a family of four. Mom's moving too, she's moving in next door. We're going to the country to enjoy the view. The only problem is, you know, they haven't got a clue. So they're calling on the dad to build the home. Trust me when I say they can't do this alone. She's a little fancy and he's afraid of snakes. We'll find out if they have what it takes. Yeah. Hey everyone, Builder Gary here. Some of you guys may be thinking about building a new house. You may get tired of paying rent. You don't want to keep feeding that landlord. You need more space. When you're out searching for land, there's a few things that I'd like to mention that you should be looking for. The first thing to consider is do you have your utilities that you're going to need for that forever home? Utilities consist of the electrical, the water, the wastewater, and gas if you want it. Not everybody does. Uh, these facilities, if you're going to put them in and they're not available, could end up costing a lot of money on the back end and you don't need any surprises back there, trust me. The second thing that I would recommend you take a look at is, is when you're out looking for the pieces of property, you want to be on the lake, you want to be on a mountain. These come with different prices. They're going to be also the consideration of the fall of the land. Uh, if you're getting up on top of the hill, more than likely you're gonna have a fall on the property. And that means that your foundation costs, your steel, your concrete, your labor, all is gonna go up. You're gonna build a flat surface for your house on a piece of property going like that. It's gonna cost more. So when you're out looking for a piece of property, understand that the topo can bring cost increases to you in your project. The third thing I, I think you should take into consideration is, is there an established homeowners association or a property owners association? They are created by the subdivision development. That's where you'll find them. They're not typically gonna be located and created for raw property that's not restricted. So if you're looking at developed areas, check into the HOA. There's a fee associated with it, uh, homeowners dues and, and these type of things that you'll end up having to pay for. Know what those fees are up front, not later when they send you a bill for their services. When you're in some of these subdivisions with restrictive covenants, they're going to be platted lots or platted acreage. And almost everyone I've ever seen is gonna have building setback lines. You have to be so far from the street. You have to be so far off your sidelines. There's easements running through it. Uh, and you can't build in any of these buildings. You can't cross over them. So if you've got a lot and your house is too big and it's over a building line, you're never gonna get it approved. So take a look at your building setbacks and your building lines when you're looking at these properties to make sure the product that you're thinking about is gonna fit on there. Either that, you're going back to the architect and having to reconfigure it to fit on the lot. The last thing that I would caution you on or bring up for your attention is when you're out looking for a lot, don't forget to think about the conveniences, conveniences of stores and churches and, 
and, and shopping centers if that's your thing. Some people want to get out into the country and get away from all that. I understand that completely. There's other people that are trying to move in and not be too far away from the local grocery stores. The closer you are into town, typically the higher the price of the property. There's a lot of things to consider when you're looking for a lot or land to build your forever home on. But I can assure you that when you walk onto a piece of property, you'll feel it, trust your gut, and complete your due diligence. Don't make any rash decisions. But more importantly, if you're gonna build it, build it the right way.